During a shopping trip, Ayan noticed a Christmas tree right in the centre of the shopping mall. While it looked beautiful and very well decorated, she realised this was not for her. I'm a Muslim, she thought. I respect my friends who celebrate Christmas, but I just want Ramadan. Ayan, are you okay? asked Adam. I'm okay. It's just, our friends celebrated Christmas and Diwali. And I want Ramadan to come soon too, said Ayan. I want Ramadan to come soon too as well. But don't worry, we can keep an eye on the calendar and get ready for Ramadan this year, said Adam, reassuring Ayan. Later that day, Adam and Ayan made a plan together. They put up the calendar and promised they would tick off the days counting down till Ramadan. A few months went by and Ayan would keep checking the calendar. Ayan looked at the calendar and it was the last days of Shaban. This means there were only five days left to go to Ramadan. Very excited, Ayan jumped up and down singing. <laughs> Ramadan is here, the blessed time of year. No eating, no drinking, we keep our hearts clear. Mum and Dad were drinking tea whilst chuckling at Ayan's sheer joy at the prospect of welcoming Ramadan. Hello class, said Mr. Najiba the teacher. Today, we will learn about how we can prepare ourselves for Ramadan with our body and mind. Mind and body, Adam thought. Hmm, mind and body. Ms. Najiba played the video for the children to help them understand how they can get their body and mind ready for Ramadan. The video played. A human is a complicated creation of Allah. We have a physical body, then we have an inner part of the human which has things only you and no one else can see or feel. These are your emotions, thoughts, feelings, beliefs, hopes and fears and only Allah alone knows this private world inside of you. For example, when someone makes you angry and you have very angry thoughts of this person, you might think horrible things, but no one knows this apart from you and Allah. So, we have to control these inner personal feelings, as well as controlling our body, like our tongue, to not say hurtful things. Now, in addition to what you just watched, one thing you should know about fasting is that you're not growing weak. Rather, you're becoming a Muslim who is strong inside and out. Ramadan is the time to think about how you can become a better Muslim, not just in this month, but for the rest of your life. It's about how we can turn these good deeds into good habits. I'm sure you're all excited to go moon sighting with your family, but remember, Unless the moon is sighted, Ramadan can't start. I hope you all enjoy your moon sighting with your parents. Class is now dismissed. Now, there were only two days left to go till Ramadan. The family were putting up decorations. Dad read the invitation he found in the post from the mosque. It says, moon sighting trip for the family. Come along. So, Dad tells the family that they're going tomorrow after Maghrib to the moon sighting trip. Remember, without the sighting, we won't know if it's Ramadan. It was finally trip day. Ayan burst out of the front door and ran to the car. It's moon sighting day, she exclaimed. Adam ran after her. I'm going to sight the moon first, he shouted. Dad started to drive the car. It was getting dark. 
The children were looking for the moon as soon as they left the house, but there was no sight. An owl was following them. The children thought it was strange. Adam whispered to Ayan, Look, I think the owl's going moon sighting with us. Ayan chuckled, I bet he doesn't know where we're going. As the family continued their journey, it started to rain. It was much darker now. From nowhere, there was a very loud bang. They heard a second bang, but this time much louder with a white sparkle. What was that? Adam murmured. Again, there was a loud thunder. It struck a tree. The tree fell blocking their way, and it landed right in front of the car. SubhanAllah! the father gasped. Oh no! said both Adam and Ayan, frightened. Don't worry, said Mum. Inshallah, Allah will find a way out for us. Just make dua. Remember, every time a Muslim is faced with an unpleasant situation, they should always turn to Allah. There were echoes of dua coming from the car. All four members of the family prayed to Allah to make their journey easy so that they can see the moon sighting. The owl watching from above saw that the family's path to the moon sighting was blocked. Shaken, the children looked out of the night sky. They noticed the owl. The owl said to the children, Patient, O little ones, I will go get help. And he flew into the air. Not far was a small cottage where a woodcutter by the name of Yahya lived. The owl got there and Mr. Yahya was praying Salah. As the owl looked on, he waited patiently for him to finish. The woodcutter was making dua. As soon as Mr. Yahya finished, the owl started to hoot and hoot and hoot. It was clear that the owl and the woodcutter were close friends and they had their own way of communicating. The woodcutter realized that someone was in trouble and that the owl was trying to lead him there. So he started to follow the owl on his tractor. Meanwhile, the children were getting cold in the car. Dad checked his phone and there was no signal. He looked up at the sky and he prayed, Ya Allah, send us help. Make a way for us. You are the only one who helps those in need. It started to rain some more, so he ran back into the car. A beautiful moon is out there somewhere, Mum whispered as she gazed out of the car window. Don't worry, children. Inshallah, I pray we get to see it. Not long, a hooting sound was heard from afar. Did you hear that? Adam yelled. No, but I can certainly hear a tractor, said Ayan. Well, it definitely sounds like a big engine, said Dad as he got out of the car. The owl started to circulate the car from above. He was trying to get the attention of the woodcutter that was closely following behind. Adam and Ayan were surprised to see the owl. Then it became apparent that this was the owl that was following them earlier. The woodcutter was also following the owl. He realized that the owl was circulating around the location of the car and it was clear that this is the point that he was being led to. Once he'd seen the car, he noticed that their pathway was blocked. The woodcutter and Adam and Ayan's dad started to converse. Soon, the woodcutter used his tractor to remove the big tree from their pathway. Delighted, the family thanked the woodcutter and the owl, but most importantly Allah for sending them help. They still had time to go moon sighting, so they drove to the top of the hill and met with a local imam who was doing the moon sighting. He called Adam and Ayan to look into the telescope. And there it was. A beautiful crescent, beaming white Ramadan moon was announced that joy filled all the hearts around the world. Ramadan Mubarak chants were heard and everyone was excited to welcome the blessed month of Ramadan. And that is the end of the story. Good night. If you enjoy watching Adam and Ayan, please don't forget to like, subscribe and click on that notification bell.